Hey, welcome back everyone to another devlog. So, as I mentioned at the end of last week's video, I was gonna do some stuff with pellets. So, if you look at Pip, he actually just looks exactly the same. But behind the screen there's some stuff going on with the pellet. So, I'll show you a bit more about that. So, if we take a look at Pip's old sprite sheet that I was using, you can see that all the colors are already where they are supposed to be. But if we take a look at the new sprite sheet I'm using, he looks kind of like a zombie. Not really how he's supposed to look, but I'll explain what's going on. So if we look at one of these colors with the color picker, you can see if we pick this green color, the red value is 36. If we pick this blue one, it's 16. And if we then take a look at one of the other images that I'm using, which is the palette, you can see if we go to number 36, the 36 color on this list, you can see that it ends up here. It's the skin tone. And that corresponds with this red value in his texture atlas. So what's happening is that there's a shader that's looking at the color of the original image it sees the red value is 36 then it also looks at the palette image and then it applies that color so as kind of a test for this palette swapping feature let's change one of his colors so let's change all the blue colors to red so that his hair and his jeans become red instead so let's just pick a red color this is fine for now and we're just gonna quickly change all the things that look kind of blue to red. I think this is probably fine. Let's save the texture. And then let's play the game and see what happens. So as we expected, his hair and his jeans are now red. Which is pretty cool. So we can use this palette swapping technique to make alternative costumes for characters but we could also change the color of this bell or the color of this coin or the color of the spring for example and it's really useful because there might be different types of springs a yellow spring might be like the default spring but maybe there's a red spring and that one jumps you up even higher or maybe there's like a green spring and then when you jump on that one it falls down so you can only use it once Instead of making a bunch of sprites and coloring them all the possible colors that you might use in the game It's way better to use a palette because then you can just Change things on the fly and you don't have to make like a million Sprites of the same object in different colors So with this palette swapping technique we can create some really cool effects like this shining transforming kind of effect It really reminds me of Secret of Mana when you use a spell, or maybe Mario when he has a star. I think it looks really cool and it really makes me want to make an RPG game. But yeah, let's just stick to this game for now. So I was really messing around with shaders, because I'm not that good at shaders and I haven't really used them so much. So it really took me quite a while to get it up and running again. And even now, I still have some problem with it. I can only use pixel shaders. I haven't figured out how to use vertex shaders yet. But I was just having some fun. And you can see I made the uh, things, the hills at the background, and made them move. I thought it looked pretty funny. I'm not going to put it in a game, but something like this might be useful later for trees or something. When I want to make the, the leaves look like they're moving in the wind or something like that. So one of the other things I changed was the way that some sprites scale. So you can see that this thing isn't all pixelated anymore. It now scales correctly. I now use 9 slice scaling which kind of grabs the corners and then it only stretches the middle part. So if we inspect the top of this thing for example we can go down here and it says 9 slice sprites. And then we can change the width, we can make it shorter, or we can make it really long, and it still scales correctly, so that's pretty cool. 
I still think the spring or the switch doesn't look very nice, so I still need to change the sprites. But it's nice that I can now at least make springs of various sizes without having to make a bunch of different sprites. So yeah, that's already it for this week. I spent a lot of time getting the shader up and running. I had a lot of trouble with that, it took me three days just to get it running, so I wasted a lot of time there. But yeah, sorry, not much exciting to show you this week. But I'm nearing 500 subscribers and I wanted to do something special. So I was thinking maybe of a Q&A or something like that. So if you guys can all leave a question for me, something that you're curious about, maybe something about my previous projects or my previous jobs or maybe something specific about this game that you want to know, maybe something about the story something like that or maybe you guys want me to show a new character or something just let me know I want to do something fun for you guys for 500 subscribers so I think I'm around 20 subscribers away right now so if you're listening and you're not subscribed please subscribe and also leave a comment I really enjoy reading your guys's comments and hit the bell thing as well so that so you can get notifications and I'll see you guys again next week hopefully answering your questions because I've hit 500 subscribers. Let's try to make it happen by next week. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next week.